Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that's kind of why I ended up with Dad Kerning Productions uh, for the Oops, for the, sorry, I, it doesn't matter, um, for the email address.
where that guy is. Right, here we go. Hey James. Yo. If for whatever reason my computer freezes, just keep going without me. I'll join sure. back again. Absolutely. Just a fear. <laughs> Glad you liked the Stardew board game. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was way more fun than I thought it was going to be. See if it'll let me post a see if it'll let me post a link. I think they do. Nope. All right. So it looks like they are done. I'm gonna hit start. Yep, we're set to go. Do 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 I'm Getting a commercial. I don't know if it's on or not. How many do we take? I can't tell. <laughs> you take the ones off the floor. Uh, three black and white ones, and five, no, three white and black ones. And yeah, you can tell which ones are black and white ones and Thanks, which man. ones are white and black ones, right? <laughs> you, you can, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, just I just threw a card on the floor. What the heck? All right. Greetings, users and programs. This is Itari Living Sacrifice. We are going to play some sellouts, bad kerning, bad kerning games, um, sellouts. Uh, we've we played this at Magfest. This is how I found the game was at Magfest. And uh, go ahead and introduce yourselves, everybody. Start with uh huh. let's start with the yellow tie guy. I am yellow tie guy. I am former console department co-head with the Queen Bunny, and of course a huge fan of all things consoles, gaming room, and Magfest in general. So I'm uh, very excited to uh, be playing a tabletop game in order to reinforce my love of console gaming. <laughs> <laughs> and Melchior? Uh, my name is Melchior. I'm a longtime MAGFest lover and attendee. Uh, I've ended there once or twice with uh, my company, Bad Kerning, that made sellouts, so uh, mean Sinistar. Um, happy to be able to play the game on stream again. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where I met you guys, was at MAGFest. Sinistar, I met you at MAGFest, and you were nice enough to hand me the only copy of this game in existence, and we took it back to our room and within minutes the entire room wanted to join in. At first it was like three or four people and then next thing you know the entire room wanted to join in and I will always remember that. Uh, yeah. But yeah, go ahead and introduce yourself real quick, man. Yeah, uh, so uh, I go by Sinistar Online. Uh, my name is Sean. Um, sellouts was initially my idea but I worked with Melchior to make it better um, and uh, Together, we pretty much put this game all together ourselves. 
There you go. And it was successfully funded on Kickstarter, yada, yada, yada. And now yes. a couple hundred copies have been sold. And we're moving on up. It's a joke. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Angela. I am sister to the Korean Yellow Tie Guy. And I am an occasional Twitch streamer and escape room enthusiast, as well as a board game lover of all kinds. And that was Yellow Tie Guy's baby goo gooing and gaga in the background. <laughs> that was just me. Uh... <laughs> all right. So. <laughs> The way this game is played is there is a customer and the rest of the people at the table are the salespeople. So I will start off as a customer. I have a problem and they're gonna have to sell me on why their product, whatever junk they have, they're gonna have to sell me on how this is gonna solve my problem. And my problem is the British are occupying my land and I want to start a new country. I have never seen this card before, y'all. I'm fired up. <laughs> I think this one got taken out of the, the full set. Of the final game? Yeah. Good to go. Good to go. I do kind of miss so, it, though. <laughs> so we, we should have three of each the black and white cards. Three whites and five black. Five blacks, okay. Or if you want to play hard mode, you could always do three black. That's right. That would be one. So... Um, normally you'd go around in a circle, but we tend to just, hey, whoever's ready first goes, goes first. So, um, Yellow Tie Guy is to my left, but if anybody else is ready to go, by all means. <clears throat> the uh, British are coming! The British are already here! <laughs> Alright, well, I have an idea for you. Uh, so the British, the British are, are colonizers, right? That's and, right. And if you're having problems with them, they're, you're probably living sometime around, like, Civil War times. Um, so their technology isn't going to be that great. So what I have for you is a quadcopter. Uh, that's right. It's a quadcopter. It's going to be technology they've never seen before. Um, and it'll really, like, I don't think we appreciate nowadays how much uh, air superiority means to modern war. And if you don't have air superiority, you're basically going to lose a war these days. Just think about how great it would have been then. You've got these quadcopters. And this quadcopter, you might be thinking, well, what, am I just going to fly around the battlefield? Well, kind of. But also, this quadcopter explodes. Like, a lot. So you'll be flying it around the battlefield, just exploding everybody. And they're not going to know what to do about it. How are they going to take down this thing? They're going to shoot their little, their little ball ammo at it? It's gonna take them twenty minutes to reload. One There's more no thing. Need to shoot it down. It'll just explode itself. The other thing is, it's the only one in existence, <laughs> uh, so you don't have to worry about them replicating the technology, because of course they can't, because it's right. the 1600s or whatever. Pretty cool. So you will have technology from the future, and it will explode like a lot, killing everybody, and then they won't even be able to make another one because they won't be able to reverse engineer it. I get you. Yeah, I exactly. Got it. And it explodes a lot, so it's reusable. <laughs> it's reusable, though. Yeah. <laughs> Just keeps exploding. Good to go. Good to go. All right, so the British are occupying my land, and I want to start a new country. Who's got something else for me? Well, oh, I man. think... Hey, you got it. You got it. Well, I, I have just a different perspective. You know, instead of trying to take out the British, I think we need to relocate you. I think we need to relocate you to a new country. Um, <laughs> and I'd like to tell you that this is a celebrity endorsed. Uh, it doesn't matter which celebrity, but I think Jack Nicholson would approve. Jack Nicholson, this. how did I know you're going to say Jack Nicholson? <laughs> Jack Nicholson would approve of this message. Only if uh, you, I will only accept this endorsement if you do the rest of the pitch in Jack Nicholson's voice. <laughs> if, well, you see, what we've got is a pool table for you, Jack. And that pool table, it has holes in it. You know why? Because it's supposed to have holes in it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what I have for you is a celebrity endorsed pool table for you to relocate your entire country to. A pool oh, table? That's not a winning, to... a winning place to <laughs> raise a family in. <laughs> So, okay. Oh All right. So, so uh, Jack Nicholson's pretty cool. 
Uh, I have I have a similar celebrity in my pitch, but we'll get there when we get there. <laughs> um, now, listen, this was my takeaway, and maybe it was the wrong takeaway, but what I learned from watching Hamilton was you can accomplish a lot with the power of music. So uh, what I offer you is a finely tuned guitar. Ooh. You're going to sing songs and rally the people into revolution, right? Okay. And you're going to need someone absolutely beautiful to perhaps play the guitar or at least be your symbol uh, on flags and whatnot. So this guitar is endorsed by Fabio. The one and only. So he's going to be your beautiful uh, figurehead for your revolution against the British. Good to go. And the, and the cool thing about when you're using this guitar, it has a cool heads-up display that shows you, like, oh, here's what chord you're playing. Here's what you need to play next. It's a super high-tech guitar. Very cool. Very cool. I got so, oh. hmm? I had the guitar card and the only uh, only in tune once card at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a good combination. Well, all of so, you guys are offering pretty awesome stuff, but I gotta let you know, I'm gonna offer you a truck that's a good wingman. So you basically get a transformer. You know, how cool is that? And it also contains two scorpions, but it doesn't say how large those scorpions are. So you can use those scorpions against those Englishmen that are invading your country. <laughs> very interesting. These are the very interesting um, solutions there, y'all. So for those, I don't think I explained this earlier. So what happens is they pick one white card from their hand, one black card, which is a, a feature, and then they draw a random feature that they have no idea what it's going to say. So they could have already pitched everything and pitched it one way, and then all of a sudden it says, oh, yeah, by the way, it turns you into a demon, 30% chance to turn you into a demon or something like that. So there's like a spin at the end that they have to overcome. So... Well, the British... Heck, my car keeps flipping over. Why is that? <laughs> it's the British. The British are taking my car. They're occupying. I want to start a new country. Um, modern war. I think I'm going to have to go with the modern warfare. Yeah. I think I'm going to have to. So, Sinistar, you are the wiener of this round. I've always said so. All right, I'm gonna put my money over here. Oh, that's not where I wanted uh -huh. it. So he gets one dollar. So the first person to three or whatever, it's kind of like cap cards against humanity. You have, you end whenever you want. It's a fun. It's it's a game for fun. It's, it can be competitive, but it's more for fun. It's a party game. That's right. right. So, ooh, this is also a card that, you know, that we kind of cut out of our out of the main set. Well, we gave it new life, but yeah, Carrot Top, <laughs> yeah, Carrot Top, will not put my car down. He will not put your car down. Yeah, you know, Carrot Top, he put on all that muscle, oh. and now, he, now he just goes around and picks stuff up, and he's got my car right now, and I don't know what to do about it. I think in the real set, it just says like a muscle man or something. <laughs> Bodybuilder, I think. Oh yeah, Bodybuilder picked up my car, and we'll put it back down. Gotcha. <laughs> So, for some reason, we really liked Carrot Top. <laughs> Carrot Top won't put your car down, but we can offer Carrot Top a soy latte. And that's soy latte <laughs> from the black market. Ooh. So you don't know what else is in that in that uh, soy latte, but it can make and receive phone calls as well. So he's got to put your car down for this special phone soy latte from the black market. Yeah, black I mean, uh, market. As far as I know, he can't hold it with one hand. Right. So he's got to use both hands. Right. Hmm. Yeah, no, that's a great point. And how could he resist? Right. For all he all right. knows, there's some, some cool stuff in that black market soy latte. Okay. What kind of cool stuff? You know, that's that... what we don't need to know. Right. That's what we'll find out after we drink it. Animal cookies. <laughs> yes, animal cookies. All right. So, <laughs> Carrot Top will put my car down. I have the solution for you. I have the holy hand grenade. Ooh. Grenade. <laughs> and because we just want you to put, we just want to put the car down. We don't necessarily need the car in perfect condition afterwards. It just needs to be able to like work to yeah. get you there. But I'll, I'll be honest, you know, I'll straight up, 
this uh, this hand grenade may <laughs> not solve your problem, but it will make you make you slightly objectively happier. So no matter what, whether this actually solves your problem or not, it's gonna make you a better person in the long run. <laughs> and it throws you a surprise birthday party, but forgets to invite your friends. So. I mean, it, it's a, probably a good thing because we're still not 100% sure if COVID is done or all that. Maybe we should just do an online thing. So we, we, won't, <laughs> we won't even have to worry about this party that we're going to have after you get your car back from Carrot Top. But you'll still be happier. Yeah, no. I mean, objective happiness is uh, you know, it's a good goal. Better than actual happiness in, in some, objectively speaking. <laughs> all right. Uh hand grenade interesting option and to keep going down right, the line well, we all know that uh so incredibly buff that he's not going to be able to be stopped with just a hand grenade so um i'm pleased to announce that uh i have exactly what you need to get carrot top to put that goddamn car down and it is oh, excellent the shirt off your back put a shirt <laughs> on him let's just nip this <laughs> We're gonna cover him up, and it's made of plastic, which means that uh, you won't have to worry about absorbing any of that sweat or, you know, funk that comes off of Carrot Top naturally. Sure. Uh, and if that wasn't enough, it also has a card that is upside down, and uh, <laughs> let's see, it it has a neural interface, and so you'll be able to program Carrot Top to put the car down. Uh, <laughs> What with you having complete access to him and making a carrot top robot free of charge is just a bonus. Of a putting plastic, a shirt on it. Plastic shirt. That with a neural interface. It'll have no breathing room. No breathing. <laughs> you don't need him to breathe. You don't need him what to if, breathe. What if it's like a plastic mesh? That should breathe. <laughs> right. If it's a celebrity mesh mesh top, it may not work uh, in the way that was described. <laughs> he may be empowered. He may be empowered if it's a mesh tank top or something, you know. Oh yeah, good point. All right. All right. Okay. So what we need to do is get Carrot Top to put your car down, and an easy way yes, to please. do that is to get Carrot Top to move. And a good way to get Carrot Top to move is unleash a Canadian goose. <laughs> now everyone knows that geese ain't something you should mess with, and uh, the goose. Yeah, and break you might your be arm. worried, like, like, oh man, like, should I let this goose loose? Uh, is he gonna turn around and bite me, or is he gonna help me with carrot top? Well, the goose <laughs> calls you master. You command this goose. This goose listens to you and only you. And you'll have a chase carrot top, and I guarantee you, he will run off scared, trying not to get covered in geese poop. <laughs> And what's also cool about this goose is that it curses you to having your picture taken always right when you look away from the camera. So you'll get, you'll finally be able to get those like brooding, looking off into the sunset pictures you've been trying to take for years, uh, but just yeah. couldn't do it. That's the stuff. Those are, those it's are gonna be easy peasy. Oh man, I you know what? I always try to take those pictures, and uh, I always end up looking at the camera. It's a real problem. <laughs> Um, okay. Does this have anything to do with the goose game? Canadian Candid. No, actually, the Canadian Goose card came out. It was be uh, from before. Goose Anomics. The Untitled <laughs> Goose Game. Untitled. Let's see. I think, in truth, I'm between the goose and the hand grenade. Uh... Like a rock in a hard place? <laughs> Both yeah. fearsome opponents. Oh, I feel like totally between the goose and a hand grenade. Right? I'm gonna start using that from now on. Yeah. Goose and a hand grenade. <laughs> oh man. You really put me in between a goose and a hand grenade with that one, James. Yeah, you know, that's right. The hand grenade sounds more interesting uh, by itself, but I think the features. I mean, I think the goose will be my friend. So I'm gonna go I with the goose. I would go with the goose uh, myself. Yeah. Personally, yeah, I mean, there's. You don't have to return the goose afterwards, so then you've just got a goose that calls you master. Personally, yeah, I would yeah. go with the goose as well over the hand grenade. I can't fault you for that, Sinistar. <laughs> I can't fault you for that. He's, he'll uh, be my goose friend. My unnamed goose friend. 
Unnamed. <laughs> Why don't you goose. have a goose named Goose? <laughs> now his name is Maverick. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, right. yes. Exactly. That's that. right. He's the top perfect. perfect. Goose, goose named, named Maverick. Maverick. Yes. All right, Melchan, That's what's good. your problem? Was... Ladies and gentlemen of of uh, the chat and the game, my problem is as follows. I drunk texted a bunch of people. <laughs> yeah. Again. Yeah, that, I mean, that's that Is happens. that a problem? So, it can be. <laughs> I'm yeah, not sure yeah. exactly what I said. On a scale of one to problem. <laughs> okay, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. I am ready. All right, yeah. so. There we go. You drunk texted a bunch of people. I'm assuming that is a problem for you, because I've done that quite a few times in my life. It's always tended to work out, though. I mean, the police were never involved or anything like that. I'm not exactly sure what, what, what situation you're in, but I'm going to assume you want to get rid of those texts. So, I've got you a Boeing 747. All right, first off, <laughs> while you are trying to get away from the consequences of these drunk texts, you can be in that Boeing 747 off the ground, in the air, where nobody can touch you. And the crazy thing about this Boeing 747 is it can hack anything. So all you, while you're up in the air, flying around the world, safe from all the consequences of all these drunk texts, all these ex-girlfriends, all these wives that found out about your ex-girlfriends that they didn't even know about, yep, I know it, I, I get it, I get it. You can be hacking their phones to get rid of all these drunk text that you sent <laughs> and the greatest thing about it is it pays your parking tickets for you oh, and Ooh. that's just a that's just an added bonus i mean parking tickets I, I, i'm i'm assuming if you're drunk texting then you're probably drunk driving so uh you probably got some parking tickets you need to get rid of as well so <laughs> there I, I have for you the boeing 747 that can hack anything and pays your parking tickets that's great. It literally ensures that my problems are below me. All right. Who's next? Who's got that beat? Well, uh, the plane sounds like an interesting idea, but do you have any idea how much it takes to fuel and maintain an entire airplane? Mm -hmm. I think I think we need to address a different problem. So the texts, they're sent. You can't get those back. Um, I say what we do from now on is occupy your hands when you've been drinking and what better way to do that than with this tickle me elmo you'll be way too tempted to keep on tickling that joyful little guy and you'll just be doing that all night right until you fall asleep and then sober up now it also just in case you're thinking well what if i'm still drunk after i'm done tickling him he also tells you exactly how much time you have left to live whether you want it to or not which is a really sobering idea so you'll sober up pretty quick while you're tickling this Elmo. And another feature it has is it comes with a free mine. Oh shit. <laughs> uh, it's a diamond mine. So um, you'll be too busy uh, earning lots and lots of money and probably trashing De Beers' uh, monopoly on the diamond market. <laughs> and you won't have time uh, to send uh anyway drunk texts. You'll be too busy counting all your money and tickling this Elmo. <laughs> this um, awesome. <laughs> tickle the Elmo idea, I gotta say. So your hands will be occupied tickling the Elmo. Understood. Yes. Gotcha. Gotcha. Nailed it. That's not... Oh, look, I've got... I've got to say, Sinistar would have you believe that you cannot get those texts back, but I believe that I have exactly just the means of retrieving those texts back from the ether. I have a boomerang, <laughs> and so you can throw it at those words, and it will come back to you, and it will bring those words with you, and it will help <laughs> you, you know, keep your friends that you have drunk texted because it has strong moral standards and will not help you commit crimes of any kind. So you know that you can trust the boomerang to retrieve the text without hurting any of your friends' feelings. And if that weren't enough, well, it also is another card that is upside down. But it does 
tell other people your secrets. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. like the text in the first place. <laughs> yeah, but it'll yeah, tell a different. Yeah, it'll tell a totally different secret. You will not have to worry about the drunk text that you sent out <laughs> uh, affecting your relationships in any way. How's that for solving a problem? <laughs> it's the uh, the uh, Jason Mendoza strategy from The Good Place. Whenever yeah. I have a problem, I throw a Molotov cocktail at it, and then I have a different problem. <laughs> hey, I agree that all these are really good ideas, but what you weren't offered is a laptop that belongs to the United Nations. So Ooh. forget those oh, friends. Shit. Forget those friends. We can get you new friends and a whole deck of cards. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it is easily lost, so I hope you put one of those trackers on it, you know, that, that you beep and it, it beeps back at you, but you won't need anything else in order to create a new life, because those friends suck anyway, and that's what you were probably drunk texting them out about to begin with. So we'll get you a holding <laughs> life thanks to the United Nations. Oh, man. Angela, that was good. That one was good. good. Who needs those friends? Just get new ones. <laughs> Just get new. You Just know, get new ones. I gotta be honest, I really liked the digital boomerang. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, goes out and retrieves your stuff. It's kind of genius. Uh, wow, this was kind of tough, but I think I'm gonna go with Hacker Plane. Hacker Plane! Hacker Plane. Uh, I like, I like the one. idea of, like, going in the sky to literally get away from my problems. It was a good letting one. it uh, hack and pay my parking tickets for me. I gotta say, I nice. agree. That that one was a pretty damn good one. If Very I do good. say so myself. Hacker plane and sounds like a movie myself. starring Kelsey Grammer. Wait, what's the name of the plane? Hacker plane. Hacker the, plane. The actual movie I'm referencing is called Money Plane. Look it up. It's terrible. Okay. I'm tired of this money on this money. <laughs> <laughs> get, get this goddamn money off this the motherfucking money off this motherfucking plane. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we have another problem, y'all. Our problem is I need to please my robot overlords with my offering. We're not Ooh. worthy. We're not worthy. <laughs> <laughs> So, what path shall these salespeople take to I'm please the robot you, overlords? I'm going to give you some moonshine to please Ooh. the robot overlords. And the best thing is it weighs 10,000 pounds, so you'll pretty much never run out of that moonshine. And on top of that, it's all watermelon flavored. Watermelon flavored moonshine. Ooh. Ah, oh, cool. You can't go wrong with that offering. Anybody that? Like, her name is Billy Chavez. <laughs> That's right. Especially if your name is Billy Chavis. 100%. Are the robot Watermelon overlords named time. Bender? Because that would be really good for that. <laughs> well, I'm going to go a different way here. Um, I say, so they're robot overlords, so they're obviously interested in taking over the world, right? Uh -huh. And the world is filled with squishy little people. And how do we... How do we restrain people in our current world that's right with handcuffs so you give them handcuffs so that they can put on the people however these handcuffs uh have a caveat because i think in general you want to be on the human side of things uh the handcuffs do the opposite of everything you want them to do so they will not securely lock up any humans and all they have to do is wait it out and escape from the handcuffs when the robots aren't looking so you're kind of playing both sides there it also has no regard no regard for the laws of mortals, so they're not they're not gonna keep people locked up if they haven't done anything wrong, which I think just plays into the narrative even better. We have a narrative. We need to write a backstory for this card. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Stop everything, write a backstory. I'm on it. Drive.google.com. <laughs> okay, just put an asterisk on it and then have like the entire back of the card be like a Paragraphs of text in like a size <laughs> two font. Yes. <laughs> All right. Who's next? We well, have some interesting okay. concepts so far. I think y'all can beat it I though. Go that... for it, yellow tie guy. Since you've got a robot overlord, you know that you have to appease. 
maybe what you need is not one tool, but many tools, or a multi-tool. And there's one feature that uh, Leatherman just still hasn't ironed out in its design, and so we have some a really unique revolutionary opportunity for you get a, a multi-tool that knows how to give a really good foot massage. Good to um, So I think between just those two things alone, like I'm certain that's enough to appease a robot overlord, but if you act now, then I will be able to throw in uh, an additional feature. It will be a very soothing multi-tool, which will help to appease the inner demons of your robot overlord. We're not worthy. Massages. Great stuff. Good to go. And, and I'm assuming I can also use these uh, soothing foot massages, not just the robot overlords. So it can appease the robot overlords as well as my own tootsies. <laughs> tootsie <laughs> toesies. Win win. Win win. That I is like a it. therapeutic tool. Yeah. Wow. So soothing. <laughs> All right. That's hard to go right after, but I will try. All right, so these robot overlords, they probably aren't too keen on humans, which is fair. I'm honestly not that keen on them either. Um, but they, the robots like learning, right? Machine learning and all that. They like learning, and especially about like old, like taking in old information. So I, I would offer them a phone of average intelligence. Heck, the robot uprising probably started due to smartphones, so they might not know about old average intelligence. <laughs> and, you know, every friend group, or every group of human slaves has that one annoying slave that you kind of wish would just leave you alone. Well, you're going to bring him with you to this offering, because it requires a living human sacrifice to work. So you'll bring the annoying guy, <laughs> and they'll sacrifice him to get all the information off this old phone. Oh man, a living sacrifice. That's hard for me to pass up. <laughs> <laughs> and what's coolest about the, yeah, this this phone of average intelligence is so old it folds into a briefcase for easy carrying. That's how large and obnoxious of an old phone this is. <laughs> and they'll be like, wow. oh my god, beep boop. This <laughs> beep, is boop, ancient beep. technology. I must learn its techniques. Steve, get in the death pool. I didn't even think about when when robots take over the world, they're gonna want to know about their ancestry. It'll be like exactly. the robot equivalent of uh, anthropology. This old phone could essentially be Robo Twenty Three and Me. <laughs> Interesting. Ooh, it is definitely between Melchior and It's a Joke. It Ti Twenty Three and Me. The Twenty Three and Me. The, the watermelon moonshine sounds good to me, but I can't figure out how it will appease the robot overlords. <laughs> I know it would definitely appease me. Damn, that's a good joke, huh? <laughs> What'd you say? TI-23 in me. TI-23 yeah, in me. My joke, but better. Definitely. Yes, TI-23 in me. <laughs> hmm. Are to date you? <laughs> so wait, this, this is like R two D. So this is like uh, the bender of. Um, that's what we were going with. That was like the bender from what was that show? Futurama. Futurama. The watermelon moonshine. I think Bender might go for that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go for for the. It's a joke. I'm gonna get this gala. I gotta at least get it just because I pulled the watermelon flavor. What are the That's chances? That's right. What are the chances? Man, watermelon moonshine sounds good right about now. Mmm. Okay. Agreed. Although, Melchior, that was a damn good one. That one was hard to pass <laughs> up. Thanks. Couldn't resist. It was a good one. And puns abound. I'll be thinking about those for weeks. Puns abound. Is it my turn to get a problem? It is. It is, yeah. Cool. Anonymous is after me for something I didn't do. Uh oh. Right, right, right. Uh oh. Anonymous is after oh, you for something you didn't do. All right. So here's here's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Anonymous, they're canceling you. It's a joke, Jane Foster. They're canceling you. All right. So here's what I've got for you. Jane Pauston, I've got you a vampire. 
And as we all know, vampires melt when exposed to sunlight. Okay, so how will this help you? Well, let's find out. In this next feature, this this vampire oh. that melts in the sunlight has a bodyguard who does not melt in the sunlight. So all we got we all know anonymous, they are more active at night and what better to catch anonymous than with a vampire who is more active at night as well. In fact, I think he's even stronger. And if they do try to trap him in the daylight, he has a bodyguard because he's going to kill all the anonymous for you. He's going to turn them into vampires for you. So now you don't just have a vampire. You have anonymous vampires all Ooh. at your disposal. And that's what I've got for you, Miss It's a Joke, Jane Poston. I feel like you're really hedging on that on that random card. <laughs> yes, I was totally hedging on that. I had no idea. I had nothing in my hand that I could think of that would do anything. It's an advanced strategy known as seat of your pants. That's right. It's what we call chasing the river. <laughs> We're top right. decking in magic. Oh, right. <laughs> Come on, Karibo. <laughs> Who's next? I'm ready if y'all are. Go for it. Uh, yeah, go for it. So I've got uh, something that I, I think would, you know, be really interesting. You are, uh, you are in need of changing the narrative. You need somebody to blame, you know, this situation on that's not you, which obviously wasn't you to begin with. Like it's all just a misunderstanding. So thankfully, you have this sad party clown to throw under the bus and all you have to do is drop his name in the local papers and everyone will make the story all about the sad party clown which is good because the party clown is super fragile and is uh going to turn this mountain into a molehill to uh take the story away from you and to be fair the sad party clown has been a little overcooked slightly overdone uh <laughs> I think we all know that's a metaphor, but for what? I'll let you decide. <laughs> all right. I do like me a sad party clown. He's a little all toasted, right. though. So, Anonymous is after you. I think what we need to do right off the bat is vindicate you. We need to <laughs> show proof that you have not done this horrible thing, and then hopefully they will listen to reason and back off. So what we're going to do is we're just going to upload your entire childhood to the internet. What I offer <laughs> you is your childhood. <laughs> you are going to prove to the internet that your childhood was totally normal, nothing special. Okay. You're going to upload it. They're going to say, oh, wow, she had such a normal upbringing. She couldn't have done anything horrible. Let's lay off her. And we can ignore the other feature because it literally says exclude, <laughs> ignore other features. So we're just going to upload and prove that you are, had a completely normal childhood and you're a normal, not evil person. Okay. <laughs> That's assuming Anonymous only goes after evil people. That's true. Uh, yeah. True. Well, if they believe you're evil anyway. Right, right. I'm evil, but have my feelings too. Well, oh, so I it, think... It could have loved you unconditionally. I, I think the uh, the problem indicates that um, they're angry at her for doing something bad. At least that's my hope, uh, even though she didn't do it. Um, so are you familiar with the Egyptian god Ra, who yes. compares the weight of your heart against like a feather or something, and that determines mm -hmm. whether or not you get into the good place? Right. Well, I have a similar uh, product here. We actually figured out how to, w how to weigh your soul on this scale. And this is going to prove without a shadow of a doubt that you did not do what Anonymous is accusing you of doing. Now, just in case they're not satisfied with that clearly 100% uh, truthful evidence, it also functions as an alarm clock, which yeah. is good because you'll want to be up uh, every day early so you can outrun them. Right. Um, <clears throat> it's also powered by embarrassment, uh, which if Anonymous is after you, they're going to try to embarrass you all the time, so you'll have perpetual power, basically. And you'll never need to worry about where, uh, whether or not this thing is going to run out of power. 
you have your solution, you have your proof, and you have a way to wake you up in the morning to uh, allow yourself time to get to safety away from Anonymous. Ooh. Powered by embarrassment. Come on, we all know if Anonymous is after you for something, you're, we're embarrassed about something. We gotta be. I don't know. It's between that and the sad, the sad clown. Uh, and over I mean, that metaphor. That metaphor was strong. Yeah, I'm gonna have to pick the sad clown. That was a strong metaphor. That's fair. <laughs> that we'll have to decide. Yeah, that was a great pitch. What'd you say, Angela? Because I could, just, like Danny said, I could just throw him under the bus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> quite litter. Wheels on the bus go over the climb. <laughs> I think the adjective we're, we're skipping over though is party. He's a party clown. Right. He likes to party. But he's sad. And well, there are lots of different parties out there. <laughs> yeah, to bring up Slurm, he could be Slurms McKenzie from Futurama, who's yeah. tired of partying. You know? Right? Fair enough. All right, Yellow Tie uh, Guy, what's your problem? My problem, I am so glad you asked. It has been a really hard day for me having to deal with the fact that I can't handle the stress of being an adult. Oh, man, it's insane. ridiculous. Help, help, I, I am to, an adult. Yeah, I've actually, I'm going to write down every pitch times. that you guys come up with. I need help. Ooh, uh, I'm ready to go <laughs> right now. What I have for you is, I mean, let's, let's admit it. This is a very common solution uh, to this problem. I have a flask for you. Um, Pretty simple flask. You open it up. You could drink out of it. Uh, you could store your booze in it, and you know people will just think you're an alcoholic, just like them, which is fine. It's also a nifty flask, so it's you know it's got nice designs on it. It looks good. Makes you feel good when you're looking at it, especially after you've been drinking out of that flask. Uh, and also, there I go being nifty again. <laughs> just to help you. Uh, with the sort of existential dread that comes from thinking about like the environment and things like that. It's a, a free range flask, which means it's made with only free range items. Uh, so you don't have to worry about your impact on the environment. All of it is free range sourced. Uh, no, you know, uh, cruelty here. Just enjoy your alcohol uh, <laughs> guilt free in the middle uh, of the day. Uh. All right, Morty. All right. All right, Morty. All right. All right, Morty. All right. Okay. Well, you can't handle the stress of being an adult. And I think we've all, I think it's pretty common knowledge that the stress of life is best solved with something with a pet. Um, and I would, <laughs> recon I would recommend personally a bottlenose dolphin. Mm. Because a bottlenose dolphin, this bottlenose dolphin has a great warranty. And a bottlenose dolphin is like, this, is, it might be one of the smartest animals besides human beings. So they can take a lot of the stress off of you. They can like do your taxes and stuff probably. I mean, whatever the, these things that as an adult that's stressing you out, this one has a great warranty and it's probably smart enough to help you out with these things. And we've all seen Flipper. If somebody's drowning in the ocean, you could send your great warranty bottle nose dolphin to go help. You could you could star in the next Flipper, <laughs> like that. Making all the money from that movie, that next TV show of the next Flipper, will definitely take some of the stress of being an adult off of you. And this great warranty bottle nose dolphin is made of gold and will probably not sink to the bottom of the ocean because it's made of gold. Because it has a great warranty. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds intense. Wow, gold so, uh, dolphin. You make... When you're done with it, you can sell it for, because <laughs> it's made of gold, you can sell the dolphin, and all the money will take the stress off of you for being an adult. It's your fault for being an adult in the first place. <laughs> yeah, how dare you live this long? <laughs> it's true. We've been trying Enticing. to reach you about your dolphin's extended warranty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to call attention to the great joke uh, made in the chat. Thank you. Right. Very nice. <laughs> this is, this oh, is from the dealership. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so your problem is you're sick of being an adult. Well, you have me, okay? <laughs> so I am your family member, and I'm also infested 
Wait, did I pull the wrong card? Nope, you did it. Yeah, uh, well, you uh, should have drawn a, a white one for that. A white one, okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm also infested with bows and arrows. So Ooh. we can go out and just shoot shit. <laughs> like, like you're 12 again. And, like, we're playing Call of Duty except IRL. So, yeah, that's fun. Right. You're filled with bows. And, no, you're you're not just filled with arrows. You're filled with bows and right. a bow right. with arrows. I'm always equipped. Always. That's right. And my bow. And my arrow. And this arrow. And this arrow. And this <laughs> and arrow. And my other bow. My you utility get an bow. arrow. Get an arrow. <laughs> you all get an arrow. All right. All right. So here's what I believe. Yeah. As as Sinistar rotates the cards in my hand, <laughs> I will give my pitch. Uh, so you can't handle the stress of being an adult. I'll tell you what the solution is. There, is that you spend your money on a material possession. So, you're gonna buy a hot tub, and you're gonna fill it up, and you're gonna hang out in there, and relax, and just feel great all the time. But you might be thinking, oh man, hot tubs are a little expensive, kind of annoying to maintain, like. What I need is more money to live a more relaxed life. Well, this hot tub while you're lounging in it convinces your boss that you're a high-value employee. Ooh. So he's going to be like, oh, man, this guy's got a hot tub. I should promote him. You're going to make more money, which is going to make your life a lot better, easier to deal with things. You can just hire people to take care of stuff you don't want to do. And every feature I flip is upside down. Uh, this hot tub also gives off a lot of pollution. Um, so that's not good for the environment. Yep. <laughs> but it could be good for you. But hey, yeah, some of the money that you earn from uh, getting paid more at work can go towards uh, containing greenhouse gases. There you go. Well, Pure, this is the first time I've ever seen you stumped. I gotta say, this is the first time I've ever seen you stumped. Like, you generally have really good pitches, and this, t this is the first time you're like, well, shit. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, oh man, Captain Planet uh, taught me there is no upside to pollution. <laughs> <laughs> but with our powers combined, we have a hot tub. With your higher paying job and ability to be an adult, you can reduce greenhouse gas. <laughs> Down to zero. Just like my flask. <laughs> I can like, reduce the brightness like so many other to things. zero. Like so many other things in life, you know, like the devil's in the details here. And so some of you have some great, you know, initial concepts. I mean, a free range flask sounds like uh, like a, a real reasonable notion. And I do want my boss to feel like I'm a high value employee uh, and a family member filled with bows and arrows is <laughs> mighty convenient. However, I've got to say uh, a great warranty on a bottle nosed dolphin made gold sounds like a tough thing to be. <laughs> Made so of gold. I'm gonna give this one. Yeah. I'm gonna give this one. Good to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the wiener. Oh, what does this card do? What does that do? R. I didn't know you could do that with R. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. Well, yeah. It, it, it rotates. Uh, I guess. I guess we're shuffling. Oh, that's so. If you just try to shuffle one thing, it's shuffling the one card. <laughs> You can also just hover over it and do and do the shuffle. The shuffle. It's Ari. What is that from? Uh, that's the hustle. I thought we were talking the truffle shuffle at first. Oh no, I wasn't a Goonies kid, so I I can't make that reference. Gotcha. Well, everyone. Hey I man, what's your problem? Everyone around me has been replaced with lifelike androids Ooh. again. Uh oh. This is a real problem, y'all. <sighs> Can someone my uh, fifth edition RPG for Captain Planet? Did so, a Captain Planet a bridge series? I have way too much knowledge of Captain Planet lore. <laughs> so everyone around me has been replaced with li with lifelike androids, right? So you're again, not, who is real? Again. <laughs> exactly. But I'm going to offer you a dinosaur. Ooh. So, you know, it doesn't matter who your friends are. This dinosaur is going to be your friend for life. Because not only is he a cool dinosaur, he also has a black belt in karate. And on top of that, 
he gets jealous super easily. So he's going to be the only friend you'll ever need. He will be there to watch your back. Anybody messes with you, he's got you. So screw those lifelike <laughs> robots. Take my time. Mm. Uh, the first thing that popped up in my head, I have no idea what song it is or even where to find it or what to Google, but something, get off, get off the floor. Everybody wants a dinosaur. <laughs> what is Everybody that song? Walk the dinosaur. Everybody walk the dinosaur. All right. Uh, well, I'm going to jump in here and I just want to say that there was a, there was a problem uh, with the way that my colleague here pronounced one of the words. It's pronounced karate. So I don't know that she knows what she's talking about. Uh, what I have for you is a monocle, right? You might be thinking, well, monocle, that's dumb. It's just a little piece of glass you put in your eye, basically, which is kind of true. But this monocle uh, has a heads-up display, essentially, um, because it has very selective hearing, and it only hears your genuine friends and not androids. So... Whenever you look at one of your friends, once they start talking, it automatically determines whether or not they're an android or a real person. So you'll be Ooh. able to pick them out instantly. And also, it keeps unfriending you and sending you new friend requests. But social media is uh, overrated anyway, so I think you should probably just delete that. Delete your Facebook. It yeah. doesn't delete this. Delete all social strategy. media. But now I still got the dinosaur song stuck in my head. That's gonna be a tough one to beat. <laughs> yeah, I, the worst, part, the best part is I only know the one line from the, from the song, so we're gonna have to listen <laughs> to that song here in a second. <laughs> they just repeat that in the chorus like eight yeah. times. <laughs> Do they really? Okay. Other songs I only know one line from. Uh, <laughs> driving a truck with my high heels on. <laughs> driving in a big old truck. Ooh, yeah, see Gregor in my the chat. Weird Al song? The Weird Al song? You're talking about the Weird Al song? Yeah, that's like basically the only the only line I can remember. Uh, in a boat in the USA. <laughs> know, so that's not, just that. 40 <laughs> times. Hey, y'all better stop singing or else we're going to get DCMA'd on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's oh, such, well, it's I'm such honored good if they singing. think I'm Springsteen. But... That is such good singing. You're going to have to stop. <laughs> <laughs> be thinking about having a second <laughs> consider set out David's day. <laughs> dolphin, that was great. Oh, and I, see, they picked the dolphin from earlier. I didn't even realize that. I sold the dolphin. I sold the dolphin to Yellow Tie Guy. Now I understand. Now I understand. Hey, dolphin. somebody stole my dollars. Can't With an extended warranty. <laughs> <laughs> All extended right. Warranty dolphin trash. I have right, a question about know. the dinosaur for after these other pitches. Go for it. All right. All right. Go for it, Melchior. So, uh, while we were singing so much, I forgot what the problem was. Everyone around me has been replaced with lifelike androids. Oh, again. that's right. That's right. All right. So, you know, they're offering you solutions to, like, see who's androids whenever I say, screw it, start from scratch. <laughs> You're going to buy a monster truck from me. You're going to get in this monster truck that flies like the wind. You're just gonna run everybody over and destroy all the all the androids. We're just gonna start clean slate, r restart humanity, run over all the androids. And this monster truck calls the police on you for fun. <laughs> so if you run over an android and maybe they're not dead, when the police run them over, they definitely will be. Good spin. <laughs> Great spin at the end. Okay. Okay. And Just the police never catch you either, because your truck flies like the wind. Flies like the wind. At the also, end you'll instantly know if anyone around you is an android, <laughs> because they'll see your monster truck, and they won't say, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Because <laughs> <laughs> a real human would say that. Oh, yeah, every time. <laughs> every time. At the end of that well, was not was song, they flip the script and say, everybody kill the dinosaur, and that shit gets real dark. Mm. Oh, shit. <laughs> hey, I, Wait, y'all, hold on a second. The do dolphin trash. If you're thinking of having a second kid, oh consider God. this instead. That you is. You say everybody kill a dinosaur. That's like we need to. That is a perfect pitch for our game. Like, yeah, can that, we like, use that we, in an we're, ad? We're stealing that dolphin. We are totally stealing that for an ad. I swear to God, dolphin. That was that's great. That Dol is great. Maybe do dolphin might be your star. Might film it for you. You never know. There you go. Ooh. Good to go. Right. Yellow tie guy, everyone around me has been replaced with lifelike androids. 
What have you got for me? I mean, let's be honest. Who gives a shit? <laughs> I mean, what what exactly are these people trying to sell you the, the tools to do? To, to stop it? To, like, save everybody else? Man, what you need is to survive. So what we've got for you is a survival kit. Okay, I promise you, you're going to live through this. You sold me a dolphin with a... A warranty, a, a lifetime warranty. And this survival kit is your lifetime warranty, sir. And it is a revolutionary survival kit. Uh, I mean, it's guaranteed that you will survive. What more do you need? It is only sold in bulk. And so, <laughs> like, not only will you survive, but an entire pallet's worth of your friends will survive as well. So, there you have it. A pallet's worth of friends. <laughs> <laughs> it's revolutionary and uh you and your friends will survive <laughs> gonna start a revolution from my bed how many survival kits are in a pallet i have to know um i believe that it is a buttload which has been scientifically proven to be a metric ton oh wow <laughs> a buttload of survival yeah. kits i like it Oh man, those were all good pitches, but I still got the dinosaur song stuck in my head. So I'm gonna have to give it to the Jane Poston. I hate to do it, guys, but that's my last round because uh, I got D and D here. Aw, oh, poo poo. Yeah, I saw. I got, I got time for one more. But I had to know. Uh, one of my viewers asked. Uh, one of my mods actually asked: Is the dinosaur a carnivore or herbivore? Both. Ooh. Both omnivore. I like An it. An omnivore. There you go. How long are we supposed to go for, Yellow Tie Guy? Uh, we are here for six more minutes is our time. Perfect. I'm sure that whoever Perfect. is ready to tune in next is itching to be live. And so if they communicate as such, we will do our best to hand this over to them. We really appreciate uh, the Let's... MAGFest consoles team. Absolutely. And I love dearly for giving yeah. us uh, the space to show off the sellouts game maybe we'll get them to play the next one buy now yeah. buy now buy now buy now you should see how amazing this game is <laughs> i'm out guys you guys have a great day all right jane poston you keep bye. moving forward bye bye so while we are waiting for the next uh i'll go ahead and do all the shameless plugs um Follow me on Twitch at Itari underscore Living Sacrifice. Just click on I've been making a bunch of uh, comments and all that. Um, follow me on Itari Living Sacrifice. I'll put the, that in there. Um, it just shows you the stars Discord. again. Huh? It's can't just, like just that. know, just know that, it's, that it's twitch.tv slash Itari, what is it, underscore? Oh, it won't underscore let you know. L1V1NG. Gotcha. Yeah, if you're yeah. if you're in the chat, you can just click on his name and go to his name and go to his That's channel. True. Right. <laughs> right, exactly. Or my, or my channel or Sinistar's channel. And also, the there channels. is Sinistar. Oh, and Melchior the Maker. Oh, they all they all stream games on Twitch. Uh, Yellow Tie Guy does music on Twitch. He also has um, a podcast oh, no. that he does. <laughs> uh, Yellow Tie Guy is an awesome musician. Um, and then. Of course, we'd love for you to go to bad kerning, bad dash kerning.com or selloutsgame.com and pick up a copy, a physical copy of the game. Or you can go on to um, the Tabletop Simulator and go through the workshop and just add this to your Tabletop Simulator. Um, do we have it on Tabletopia? Uh, yeah, a lesser form of the game. A lesser also form of the game. Also, if you wanna if you wanna support sellouts, uh, we would really appreciate it. If you thought the game was too dirty, we were considering we were kicking around a cleaner version of the game. If you thought the game was too clean, we were considering a dirtier version of the game. Uh, so support it, tell your friends, and and we want to do expansions and things like that alongside other games. Bad kerning is uh, we got a lot of ideas that we want to work on. Yeah, there's a couple of ways to contact us on our on our website too at bad com at the bottom. Uh, you can send us ideas, you can ask us questions, whatever you want to do. Absolutely. And y'all, uh, we will be seeing you. We can't wait for the next MAG event. MAG is oh, where MAGFest and MAG stuff.
stock and mag this and mag that is where 80% of my friends come from. And I love you guys so much. Uh, I really appreciate everything y'all have done for us. And we will see y'all in the next one. Keep moving Thank forward, y'all. Ready to make the swap to the next event. Thank you all for having us. Enjoy the rest <laughs> of Maga de Ocho weekend. Ooh. Ooh, I do want to plug the Discord. Thank you, Dolphin. Hold on one second. <laughs> I thought I'd already done that. My fault. Oh, you flipped the table. I was going to do that earlier, but... <laughs> uh, now I'll never get the there chance. It goes. I thought you could undo it. Uh, whoever the leader of the loot uh, uh, okay. is the only one that can reset it. It's an option somewhere at the top, I think. In options, maybe. Are we offline with the consoles eight? <clears throat> yep. Yeah, we I just think we're out. Yep. We are out. All right. Cool. Well, cool. That was fun. That was fun. We had an average of 15 people watching. Yeah, that was pretty good. I hope you had an average of 15 people liking. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Danny, thank you for doing that, man. Yeah, you bet. Uh, I mean, it's just one of those opportunities. You know, if, if it comes along in school, you know. Um, I enjoy doing it too. I like playing, and I don't think it takes a lot of work to play the game and have a good time while playing it and showing it off. So, Absolutely. Definitely. So yeah, so let's uh, find some more uh, some more chances to show it off. Hundred percent, hundred percent. All right, y'all. My wife needs help with something, so I gotta rock and roll. Right. Love you guys. I will catch y'all. You got D and D. Peace. Yeah, I gotta go Peace. pick up my wife and some. All right, thank you for thank this, Atari. You, guys. you yes. betcha. Thank you, Danny. Right. Bye. Have a good Bye. rest of your weekend, guys. Bye, guys. Everybody leave? I guess everybody left. Alright. That's cool. Yeah, uh, Hats, if you want to watch it, it's it'll be available on the VOD. Um, do you like my clown guy? That way. It's me. It's not me. It's, it might be me. Why the clown? <laughs> well, yeah, I thought about that. Um, I thought it would be more eye-catching, so I actually used it in an ad. And I used um, phrases like, no more funny business. Uh which I thought were funny, but that's probably only because I'm terrible at advertising. Uh, <clears throat> and the... I decided to use it for this just because I had it uh, in one of my picture folders, and so instead of the looking for game screen that, that by default shows, uh, I have this now, which I thought would be funnier. And it's sort of like a low-key advertisement. High-key, really. And I have a thing that goes to my problem.cards website, so you could display, so I can display a problem. And it generates a random one every time. I've never used it before. Uh, for realsies. I was trying to figure out how actually to uh, create an animation that would pop up on the screen with like an actual card looking object. Um, but I haven't found a good way to do that yet. Uh, but I had a couple and like five or six different prototypes that I was working on and none of them really panned out so this is all I have right now.
But I thought the the clown in a business suit was funny, so that's why I stuck with that one. Are you not entertained? Uh, but now that the demo is over, I'm gonna end the stream. He's terrifying. Why haven't we played this at one of the holidays? Well, nobody brings it up. But see, the way I think about it is, I don't, I don't want to force people to feel like they have to play my game just because I'm there. So, <laughs> whenever I'm at a place, I never recommend the game that I made because then it. I don't know, it feels forced and ingenuine. And, uh... I, I mean... Absolutely, whenever we're at my parents' house uh, for family get-togethers, uh, I'll absolutely play it. Um, my mom bought a copy, and she has it. She actually has the expansion, too. Um, so they're both there. Just bring a signed copy by the creator and casually point it out. Oh, yeah. Hey, what's what's this that's sitting over in the corner? Can we talk about this thing? <laughs> is this signed? It is signed! This one actually has my name. Uh, in black ink. <laughs> I didn't know if that one was signed. I think I, st I still have the silver marker somewhere. So maybe I should do that. But, um... Be like a spy movie with the invisible ink. But can't... In that case, can't I just say that, uh... Whoa. That one's wrong. <laughs> it's broken. I don't know why it's broken. Uh, there we go. Um, if I want to claim invisible ink, can't I just say that it's been signed and not actually sign it? Sounds like a cheaty way to do it, but... Yeah. So they're, all the copies that we printed are signed. If you have a copy of Sellouts, it's a, it's a signed copy. No one's gonna know. <laughs> I mean, thankfully we don't we don't cater to spies directly. So, I mean, what's the likelihood that a spy has one of our games? Unless they're all spies. I think C. Greg, uh, you have one, don't you? I think he has one. <laughs> by the, what is that, the transitive property? So he does know. And the traveling salesman. Very nice. <clears throat> Which we appreciate the support, by the way. Of course. Uh, I, you, I think you both have... Uh, it's a fallacy. <laughs> I think you both have the main game, at least. There's no implication that all people who know are spies. <laughs> oh, you have a signed copy. I... it was... There was a... there was an amount... a high amount of pride. Oh, that's fine. There was a high amount of pride uh, when we got the copies of sellouts and signed them. And I got a picture of like all the signed, maybe not all the signed copies, but a lot of the signed copies just sitting on my kitchen counter, which me and my dad built together, uh, filled with copies of a game that Al, uh, Melchan, I don't know, I don't think he cares if I say his name. Yeah, three copies. They're around there. Um, if you round down to the nearest three, then yeah. Um, 
I don't know, it was just a really exciting moment because we had been working up to that point for like two and a half years or something. <laughs> and finally we got them printed and they were here. And uh, I had the, the silver Sharpie and we just signed the crap out of these things. That was a good day. It was a, it was a good feeling that we... The thing that we've been that we've been working on not only got funded, but we finally had it, and it was nice. It is the little things. It it's. I'm not usually a person who starts a personal project and actually sees it all the way through to the very end, like. I'll usually get it if I'm I'll get it to working sometimes but the fact that we were able to bring this project to life it was just very exciting now we just need people to notice it <laughs> which has been the biggest the biggest hurdle out of all of it No, I kind of forgot why I started telling that story. Let's take a copy of the game. Why is this thing popped up? Put an Aheaga on it. The caption it noticed me. Uh. Well, let's try something real quick here. Image, add source, add new source. Ah, uh, Iago. Is that what I said or is that how you say it? I don't know how to say that. I don't like that trend. It's bizarre and disconcerting to me and seems forced. Thank you. Do we have a... We must have pictures. Here we go. No? Where's the pictures that I have? Where's my effing pictures? Where'd they go? Alright. Use that picture. Roy. Ah, hey, gal. You would vote for a dirty expansion pack. The I remember specifically we we never got a lot of um, requests for our game uh, in terms of like new content. But I remember specifically one girl when we were playtesting it at um, what was it Gen Con. She specifically asked if we would do a, a dirtier version of the game, and. The <clears throat> if you just <laughs> well maybe that that could definitely go <laughs> yeah okay I like it I like that a lot actually I could probably do that for the so. The original version of the game had a lot of dirty references, it had a lot of, like, um, media references. The final version of the game that we put out does still have those things, absolutely, and I don't want to pretend like they don't. But they're, they're less, they're less reference-y than, um, they could have been. So like we talked about in um, in that in that gameplay that we just did, the the original card, which is still in the tabletop simulator version of the game, was uh, carrot top won't put my card down, and I thought it was really funny when I wrote that card because I'm I'm fairly certain that card was my idea, 
I thought it was really funny because Carrot Top had just, like, he was bulking up like crazy. And, um, I, I thought it would be really funny if he just, like, he picked up your car and he was bullying you and, and that was the, that was the context of the problem. Eventually we re, uh, wrote that card so it was bodybuilders, so you don't actually have to know who Carrot Top is. What did I do with that? Uh, in order to understand the problem. But the original version of the game had a lot of stuff like that, and it also had, I think one of the first products on our product list was like a big floppy dildo. And um, the reason it stuck out in my mind so much is because I, I, we, I printed out, I was developing the print and play version of the game, and the big floppy dildo was like number one on our card list, and I printed it out at work. So when I printed it out on the work printer, I like ran over to the printer so that nobody would grab the paper uh, before I did. And <laughs> the first card in the print and play just had a big floppy dildo. And when I got over there, uh, there was somebody else at the printer waiting for their thing to print. So <laughs> I expected to get some weird looks. I didn't really look at them. Because uh, I only knew the <laughs> those, that person by face. I didn't know who they were at all. Um... But they just, they took their stuff, and they walked away, and they didn't say anything to me. And I still have that job, so we're good there. <laughs> but that was a, a little bit of a funny anecdote about the development of this game. And, uh... It's just, it, it was an interesting, um development process for making the game and uh, I hope that none of my employers see this not that I think it would be a big deal but you know maybe oh 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 did I find it That's not it. No, 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 no. Was it a PNG? It must have been a PNG. So, and very, very few people actually know that I worked on this. Uh, like I didn't I still haven't told most of the people I work with from different departments. Which means I'm gonna have to kill you both. Um Damn it, I don't know where I where I stored this. Three people can keep a secret if two of them are dead. You have to say you went to college in a couple classes. Let's see, maybe so you've been curious this whole time. <laughs> That's a long way away. So I don't know... <clears throat> K easy life. <laughs> it's a very specific number too. It's almost like you you googled the distance between. Ooh. Do you guys actually know each other?
<laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Man, you went you went nuts with those quote with those um commands hats. Wow, imagine that. All these years. So now everybody knows each other. In addition, in addition to that, um, my business partner Melchan Melchior uh, was. Uh, <clears throat> I officially met him. What's Lady Burger up to today? She's downstairs. Uh. I'm actually going to go talk to her about if we're doing anything tonight. If we're not doing anything, I might stream more, but that's... I don't want to promise anything. Um, but anyway, so uh, Melchior and I, uh, we worked together, and uh, we started hanging out a little bit before I brought up sellouts to him. And uh, <clears throat> a little while after that, or quite a bit after that, we got to talking and he, we, we finally realized that we were both in the same room like five years earlier. Yeah, now he runs the company. That's right. Uh, because when I went down to Penn State main campus, he was running the Humans vs. Zombies game. And he uh, had people in the room to introduce that concept to everybody and like get everybody on the same page about the rules. <clears throat> and as he was telling me about this, I <laughs> brought up the fact that uh, he played CeeLo Green's uh, Forget You, but the more explicit version uh, over... <laughs> over the uh, loudspeakers in the room so we had to listen to the entire song and uh, yeah we were in the same room uh, like five years before we actually met it's just a really funny coincidence to me also I was going I was trying to find I made this this image of uh, Agent 47 with um, anime eyes and I posted it in the discord but I'm having a hard time finding the eyes and then you bring out the yearbook and find out you're in the same class in second grade no I, we definitely weren't in in grade school or high school together because he went to school down south uh, in the, um, well, I don't want to give too much away, but to mid Pennsylvania, and I was in the Northeast. <clears throat> But it was just funny to, it's, it's funny to realize that about, that about each other, uh, and the fact that, uh, after all these years, like, we run into each other and then we started a business together making a game that we both uh, really enjoy and we think other people would enjoy too <clears throat> and then I met you hats because of Mel Chan uh, so it <laughs> brings people together that's right there's just a, a chain that connects all of us. We got we got uh, seven degrees, six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Man, now I can't even find the Agent Forty Seven picture that I 
that I was talking about. <laughs> is that it? Where is it? He met Milky Milky through Worthington. Did he go to Worthington? I didn't know about that. I thought he was... <laughs> That's alright. I try to use Melchan whenever I talk about him. There's more degrees there? At Worthington? Really? I always thought it was you had to go to... to or you could go to a satellite school and then go to uh, Worthing... or uh, main campus for the rest of your degree. Oh, I see. Here we go. Finally found this image at least. Jeez. Oh, they rebranded? I didn't hear about that. They're looking to add the new cybersecurity degree? Oh, maybe I should go back to school. Give up this life of Twitch streaming and board game making. It's not working out for me, really. I'm poor. Here, so anyway, this is the image I was talking about. <laughs> I added the eyes, and I know I have the image for the eyes somewhere, but I don't know where the image is. So I was just going to take those eyes and put them on the sellouts box. I think I did that at some point. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I think it was something that uh, Juniper said um, in the in the Discord. I just put the I threw the eyes on there and it, it was it was part of a whole discussion. So anyway, I threw eyes on there and I have the eyes somewhere and I don't know where and that's where we're at. So if I take those eyes, put them on this box. Then, uh, then we'll get tons of sales. We'll compete with uh, Samsung Sam now. People can make fan art of sellouts. <laughs> I think it'll work out. <clears throat> I keep thinking about taking the nihilism route in my advertising. My one of my, I was actually really proud of the idea of my last uh, ad campaign, which was like, you need to give your box boobs first. <laughs> that can be accomplished. Um, but my last ad ad campaign idea was like, uh, basically doing uh photo shops of some of my favorite um, product feature combos and then it was like can your other can your other games do this or do you other do your other games let you have this or something like that and uh, I thought it was a really great idea um, but the response was sort of underwhelming Um, so yeah, uh, the lesson learned there is I don't know anything about appealing to a wider audience. Can you even call your game sellouts if you don't sell out to sex appeal? <laughs> we did a little bit, uh, in a different video. We're trying to pull out all the stops because we need, hence the need for a dirty version. Yeah, that's right. 
<laughs> I have there's a there's um quote commands. I realized that somewhat recently. I thought I had a few good quotes when I was playing Doom. Was it Doom? Might have been Doom. Um, I thought I disabled all the quotes on BurgerBot though. I don't know why BurgerBot is still spouting quotes. Oh no, there's still one there. I just didn't delete it yet. Better not disable BurgerBot. No, I just took the quotes off of that and put the quotes into Streamlabs because Streamlabs records the um, the game name as well as the date when they were added. Yeah, no, BurgerBot is, is uh, going to be a regular staple. Yeah, always. Aw, bitch. <laughs> and that was right, right? Temuji was June. Uh, Junpei. We're in the slot house now. That was, um... Uh, Sh Shenmu? Very interesting games they've introduced to me. Well, you didn't introduce me to to Shenmue, but the Zero Escape games. No, absolutely not. <laughs> Someone might understand the Temuji reference, but that's about it. The so. I did actually want to play through um, Persona and that other one, but the it was just frustrating that it was like uh, that I would lose frames any time I got to like a, a still motion scene. Ten me oldie. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I still have it. And I, I vaguely remember what was happening. There was like a murder at a merry-go-round. Uh, and I was talking to a pop star in the, in the car. Time to sell out and become a Genshin Impact streamer. <laughs> I don't know that I would do it justice. I would have to drink a lot. Besides, I did uh, Anime Dark Souls. What was that game called? You know the one. A set, that was the robot thing, right? Code Vein, yeah, that was Anime Dark Souls. <clears throat> See, my, my problem is... Oh, was it? Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, Aset was the um, the pop star. You're right. Yep. That was my mistake. They put a lot of A things in there. I really wish I could find those eyes. I don't know where I put those. The <laughs> He's dispensed the agents. Oh no! <laughs> You've discovered me. I am a fake gamer. <sighs> I have so many games that I want to play, <clears throat> but I, I realize that a lot of those games probably aren't very interesting to watch. 
Or at the very least, I won't be interesting if I stream them. You know that I just put up the YouTube videos and pretended to play. <laughs> yeah, that was it. I. That's why those games are in my Steam library right now. My Steam library with way too many freaking games. Build it and the viewers will come. Eh, you say that. It's just too contested anymore. It's too many people. <laughs> Massive stream, re stream revenue, yeah. I think, like, you, June for a while in 2020, and, like, one other person have been all of my revenue from Twitch, and I barely see any of that money. Which, don't get me wrong, support is greatly appreciated. But, it's, uh... At this point, I have to say, I'm either streaming for fun, or I have to give up streaming, because... Uh, it's not a good business model for me. <clears throat> as much fun as it is. So I'm, I'm falling back on I'm doing it for fun, and then if money shows up, well, that's a different story. But it is fun. I do feel like I talk a lot more when I stream, which is probably a good thing for me. It helps you procrastinate going to Sam's Club. There you go. <laughs> is that a good thing, though? Do you want to procrastinate? LA. Is it like an all day, is it an all day thing because of uh, traffic and whatnot? I understand LA has a ton of terrible traffic. Ah, I see. Fair enough. Cannot blame you for that one bit. I think that's part of the reason why I tend not to go places is just because of all the traffic. Which I know here <laughs> is going to be a lot less than there, but I don't think I would bother going anywhere in LA if I was there. Oh yeah, you can curse. I've been trying to stray away to stay away from it as as much but 65 minutes to go nine miles wow damn i i did already talk about big floppy dildos and dildons yeah that's awful I can't stand traffic. I like, I like driving, but I don't drive nearly as much as I would if, like, nobody else drove. <laughs> no, driving is fun. I mean, the driving itself. Driving in traffic is a different story, but driving is fun. Yeah. I mean, that's my opinion, obviously. <sighs> I actually 
my anxiety behind the wheel is, has come down a lot. Um, surprisingly. I think I've gotten to be a pretty good driver now. And uh, I got a, a new car recently. Out with my Twitch money. That's I'm saving that for my mansion. Um, I got a new car. It's I could uh, go really fast with it, uh, but I tend not to. I like to think that I've been a pretty good driver. Just texting me. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, nice. Is that new? Is that new? Trailblazer. Oh yeah, my dad was telling me that you got a Trailblazer. It's a pretty good looking car. Looks good, man. Congrats. It's killing me that I can't find these anime eyes. <laughs> this entire time while I've been talking, I've just been trying to find the, the, the image that I have. <laughs> it's bugging the hell out of me. Yeah, no, congratulations. Um, we can get new eyes. I. <laughs> that's a great point. Uh, I probably just googled anime eyes and found the closest thing. Here we go. This will be even better. path and add source add new where did it go oh no quotes oh why is it Oh, that's not what I wanted. Edit. Uh, rotate. No, not rotate. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Use those anime terms. I don't know what they mean. I also don't know why it showed up with a white background. Download it as a PNG. saved the um, the Adobe transparent background um, all right I really have to pee I'll be right back
Hey, catch you later, man. Thanks for stopping by. Stop bullying me, Nagatoro is an anime about a girl named Nagatoro who bullies her quiet art senpai. I... I, well, I don't know what to think about that, to be perfectly honest. that actually the lines the lines kind of blend in a little too well there Maybe, maybe rotate it? Is there just a, a rotate by x degrees function? There is, okay. No, there's not. What? Okay, what if I do... I have an idea. It's going to be so difficult to stay in frame on, <laughs> on this. Hide that. <laughs> it's like that scene from uh, Full Metal Alchemist when they reveal the dog monster. Notice me, senpai. I'm gonna cancel myself from the internet. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> uh. 
Whoops. That's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> oh. Isn't technology fun? I probably have to swap the eyes if I if I flip them this way. I <laughs> I'm a card game, ask me anything. <laughs> I gotta take my nose out of it. <laughs> What's the clip? <laughs> it's going to be so difficult to stay in frame on, on this. <laughs> yeah. I gotta see what Shanae's up to. And then, uh... Maybe I'll stream later, if we're not doing anything. <laughs> I've been playing- I started playing through the Fear series. I think I'll probably continue that if I do. <laughs> oh. <laughs> anyway I'll catch you later man this was fun what happens if I do this oh <laughs> why is the camera always broken <laughs> it's always It's always framed in the wrong way. Wait, where was the... Oh, there it is. Play me! Alright. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Talk to you later. Do you think it's better without the glasses in frame? Should I just get my eyes? <laughs> Take off. Catch you later. Have a good day. <laughs>